Hello and welcome to a free tutorial by Nicola Dean from The Flock. In this tutorial I am going to be showing you how to make a penguin in a relief style. At the end of the video I will also show you how you can turn this into either a brooch, a magnet or to use on a greetings card. I am happy for you to make items from this tutorial for personal use or to sell. All I ask is if you share what you have made, that you add a note to say that you made it from a free tutorial from The Flock and add a link to The Flock's Facebook group. Please also be aware that the tutorial and its content is protected by copyright and must not be copied or shared without prior permission. Thank you. Let's get started. To make your own relief style penguin, you will need your needle felting surface, your needle felting needles. You will need a shaping needle. I like to use a 38 gauge triangular needle for this and a finishing needle. I like to use a 42 gauge needle for this. You will also need your finger protectors if you want to use them. I will not be using finger protectors in this tutorial so that you can clearly see what I am doing but I advise that you wear yours. You will also need some fibres in pale grey, white and black. I have created a printable template to assist you with this tutorial so that you can achieve the correct shapes and size. For best results, print this at a scale of 100%. I will add a link to this template in the description. At the end of this tutorial, I will show you some ways you can use the finished penguin. Depending on which option you choose, you may also need a brooch back, a magnet or some card. Before you start needle felting, you will need to have printed the template. Then either trace and cut out a copy or cut out directly the starter template. You will then also need the rest of the images on the template as we move through the stages of needle felting the penguin. But first we are going to use the starter template to help us get the initial shape of the penguin correct. First you will need your light grey fibre. I am using a carded fibre. If you are using a fibre that has not been carded, I recommend that you hand card this or if you don't have any carders, you can just break and mess up the fibres between your fingers. I will link some useful videos in the description with more information on how to do this. Lay a thin, even layer of grey fibre on your felting surface, ensuring that it is a bit larger than the starting template. Then, using your shaping needle, stab over the surface using gentle, shallow stabs so not to push the fibre into the felting surface. Then carefully lift this off your surface, turn it over and repeat this on the other side. Next, lay your starter template over the fibre and carefully stab around the edge following the shape of the template. Once 
Once you have done this, remove the template and start to carefully fold in the edges, stabbing them down as you go. The aim is to create a flat shape to match the template. As you stab, keep checking the shape you are creating against the shape of the starter template. You can also place the template over the fibre and stab the edges inwards towards the centre to help you achieve the correct starting shape. Keep turning the piece so that you are shaping it evenly on both sides. You can also rub the piece between the palms of your hands to help felt it further and keep it as a flat shape. Keep repeating these steps until the shape matches the starter template. Once your piece matches the starter template, we are then going to start using the other images on the printed template to continue the shaping. Continue to stab and shape the piece to match the shape and size of the central penguin drawing. Your finished shape should be an evenly but not fully felted flat shape with a good match to the size and shape of the central drawing on the printed template. Your shape should now look like this. I am now going to show you how to build up the shape of the penguin's body to match the template. I will show you how to create the chest, tummy, legs and head. First, we are going to create the chest. Pull off a small section of fibre and loosely roll this. Lay this over the body between the neck and the hips so that the folded edges run horizontally across the body. Stab this in place along the folded edges to attach it. Then stab the fluffy edges inwards and downwards following the edges of the starting shape.
Once attached, continue to stab it so that the edges of the chest taper downwards as it meets the edge of the starting shape and so that the centre of the chest has a curved apex. Next, you need to create the legs. To do this, take a small section of fibre and split it in half. Then, tightly roll one half. Lay this over one of the leg areas so that the folded edges run vertically up the body. Stab around all of the edges following the shape of the starter shape. Once attached, continue to stab it so that the shape matches the template. Repeat this with the other leg. Next, you need to create the penguin's tummy. As with the chest, take a small section of fibre and loosely roll this. Lay this between the legs so that the folded edges run vertically up the body and stab this in place, tapering all of the edges downwards, leaving the centre of the tummy with a curved apex. Finally, to create the head, take a small section of fibre and fold this into a disc shape. Lay this over the head section and stab it around the edges to match the shape of the head on the starter shape. Then continue to stab and shape it so that it becomes a domed shape. Next, it is time to blend all of these shapes together. To do this, take small thin pieces of fibre at a time and lay them over the body of the penguin and seamlessly stab them in place blending all of the joins, being careful to maintain the shapes that you have created. It is a good idea as you stab to keep checking that your penguin's shape still matches the template. Continue until all the joins have been seamlessly blended. Now 
your penguin should now look like this and be a close match to the drawings on the template. Next, it is time to add the colouring and details to the face. First, you need to take a small piece of your white fibre. As I am using fibre that has been processed as a top, I am breaking it into smaller pieces and messing them up before I add it to the penguin. If you are using a carded fibre, you can skip this step. Lay the white fibre over the face and stab this in place with your shaping needle. You need to cover the front of the face down to the neck and part way around the sides and the top of the face. Once the white fibre has been attached, swap to your finishing needle to stab it further, smoothing the finish and hiding any holes left by your shaping needle. Next, we need to add the black markings to the face. To do this, we first need to draw out the shape on the face using very thin wisps of black fibre, starting with the central line that meets the beak. Take a small wisp of black fibre, fold it in half, then stab the fold into the centre of the face. Then guide this with your needle up towards the top of the head, stabbing in place as you go. Then take one piece of the folded wisp and shape it into an arch around and down the face and slightly under the chin on one side. And then repeat this with the other wisp on the other side. Add more fibre if you run out. Take some time to make sure that these are even. Then, using small pieces of black fibre at a time, fill in the shapes, taking the black fibre right around the back of the head. I am using a carded black fibre. If you are using fibre that has been processed as a top, it would be best to break this up into smaller pieces and mess them up in your fingers, just as I did with the white fibre, before attaching it to the head. Finally, take a tiny bit of black fibre and add this to the centre of the face, 
blending it into the central vertical line so that the end of the line where the beak will be is a little wider and more rounded. Now take a good look at your penguin to check that the black markings are all even. If there are any indiscrepancies, add a little more fibre to even it all up. Once you are happy that everything is even, swap to your finishing needle and stab all over the black markings to tuck in any loose ends so that the finish is nice and smooth. Your penguin should now look like this. I am now going to show you how to add the penguin's eyes and the beak. For the eyes, pull off two tiny bits of black fibre and roll these into two matching small balls. Place each ball one at a time on the penguin's face in the position marked on the template. Then, using your finishing needle, stab it in place making a small even eye. Try to keep the eyes even in size and position. Then, to make the beak, take a small piece of grey fibre and a small piece of black fibre and hand blend these together. Then, pull off a tiny piece a little larger than the amount you used for the eyes. Roll this into a ball and then position it in the centre of the face and stab around the edges to attach it and shape the beak. Your penguin should now look like this. I am now going to show you how to add the penguin's wings. During this step you will need to pay close attention to the shape of the wings on the template. First, pull off a small section of grey fibre, then split this into two equal halves. Using one half at a time, Pull the fibre apart and re-stack it a few times to make sure it is even. 
Then lay it over one side of the body at an angle so that it overhangs the edge of the body evenly. Then, using your shaping needle, stab it in the centre a little to hold it in place. Next, you need to use your needle to guide and stab the fibre, manipulating it into the shape of the wing shown on the template. This is a little tricky, so take your time and keep referring to the shape on the template. It also helps to stab the edges of the wing at an almost horizontal angle, tucking the fibre under itself, so that there is a clear edge to the wing. When you get to where the shoulder would be, gradually taper and blend this into the body. Repeat these steps with the other wing. Your penguin should now look like this. Next, using your finishing needle, stab all over the surface of the penguin to refine the shapes, smooth the surface and firm everything up. Your penguin should now look like this. You can now either leave the penguin as it is or you can follow one of the next optional steps to turn it into a decoration on a greetings card, a brooch or a magnet. To make a penguin greetings card, take some card and fold it in half. Then you can either glue the penguin to the card, I would suggest using a hot glue gun for this, or you could stitch through the card into the penguin using a needle and thread. To turn the penguin into a brooch, you will need to attach a brooch finding like this to the back of the penguin. To do this, take a small piece of matching grey fibre and gently stub the surface of this. Try not to stab into the foam. Then carefully lift this off the foam, turn it over and stab this on the other side. To help felt it together further, rub it between the palms of your hands. Then open your brooch and position it on the back of your penguin. Lay the fibre over the back plate of the brooch and stab around the brooch to secure it in place, blending the fibre seamlessly onto the back of the penguin.
To turn the penguin into a magnet, you will need a small, strong magnet like this. Whilst it would be possible to glue the magnet to the penguin, I prefer the method I am about to show you, as if done well, it secures the magnet more securely. To attach the magnet to the back of the penguin, take a small piece of matching grey fibre and gently stab the surface of this, trying not to stab into the foam. Then carefully lift this off your foam, turn it over and stab the other side. Then to help felt it further, rub it between the palms of your hands. Then position the magnet on the back of the penguin. You could add some glue at this stage to make it extra secure if you wish. Then lay the fibre over the magnet and stab all around the edges, using the fibre like a net to hold it securely in place. Oh, and a word of warning, as I found, the magnet will try to stick to your needle. To ensure you do not miss future informational videos or tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. You can also come and join the Phlox Needle Felting community on Facebook. There is a link to this in the description. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. As explained at the beginning, I am happy for you to make items from this tutorial for personal use or to sell. All I ask is, if you share what you have made, that you add a note to say that you made it from a free tutorial from the Flock and add a link to the Flock's Facebook group. Please also be aware that the tutorial and its content is protected by copyright and must not be copied or shared without prior permission. Thank you.